Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Gears TV. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Apollo. No, no, not that one. This guy, no, not that one either. How about these? No. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Speed Form Apollo from Under Armour. Now, most of us know Under Armour as this kind of feisty upstart company that was started by Kevin Plank in 1996 in his grandmother's Washington, D.C. basement. We're familiar with seeing them on the backs of football players and baseball players and basketball players and soccer and any, pretty much any sport you can imagine. But one place where Under Armour really hadn't gone full bore after things was in the performance running shoe market until the Speed Form came around. So today we're going to take a look at our first shoe that we've taken a look at from Under Armour, the Speed Form Apollo, and give you our impressions. As we have seen with quite a few shoes recently, Under Armour has really inextricably linked the midsole and the outsole. So we're going to talk about those together a little bit. So the first thing that you'll notice looking at the bottom, aside from the fact that it is way dirty from me running in it, is that it looks kind of like a foot. Now Under Armour has taken a go at making this very anatomical looking because with the whole natural running movement, that seems to be the way that things are going. Now I have something to say about that, but I'll get to that in a second. First, let's take a, a look at the materials of the outsole and the midsole. Now this foam here, which is kind of their version of EVA, is known as Micro G Foam. Very lightweight, very durable to a large degree, and what they've done is reinforced that with these orange sections that you can see here. Now these orange sections are carbon rubber compound, which is going to basically beef up the shoe and make it a little bit more durable. You can see those carbon rubber sections are in places here in the heel for those devout heel draggers in the crowd as well as right under the forefoot landing spot, kind of right at the front of the metatarsal heads there, and then up into the toes. Now all of this is overlaid with this kind of uh, almost fingerprint type of pattern which you may be able to see there. And another cool thing is that through the midfoot, through the arch right here, it actually looks a lot like the plantar fascia does when kind of the foot is cut open, which God forbid I hope you ever have to see that. Now about that foot shaped thing I was mentioning a second ago, what we can see here is that yes, it does look like a bare foot, but what it looks like is a western or habitually shod bare foot. A natural foot shape doesn't really look like this. Now here's a picture of a traditionally shod foot or a habitually shod foot versus a habitually unshod foot or a foot that's really not spending much time in shoes, if any at all. Now what you'll notice is that the toes of the habitually unshod foot are very splayed. And that is the way that even an habitually shod foot, in other words, my foot, your foot, western feet in general, those feet are going to still splay to that point. So what's interesting to me about the Speed Form Apollo is that the shape of the shoe is based on where our foot state sits in a static state. When it's up off the ground and there's no pressure being exerted on it. What I would probably prefer to see is a toe box and a, toe, a foot shape rather up front that allows for it to the toes to go somewhere. So it's rather than being at the starting point of where the foot is without pressure, I'd like to see it where the foot is when pressure or weight is exerted upon it. Not a deal breaker and it still feels really nice on the foot, but I just thought it was worth mentioning. Now the feel of the outsole and midsole, which we will talk a little bit more about in the ride section of this review, is actually interesting and kind of contradictory. Now at first I picked it up and I gave it a squeeze I was like, huh, that's actually kind of soft. But what's interesting about it, it's got a 16 millimeter drop, 16 millimeter rather stack height in the forefoot and a 24 millimeter stack height in the heel for a drop of six, or excuse me, eight millimeters. Um, what's interesting is that it sits low enough to the ground and you can kind of see how low it sits. The stack is pretty low that while the foam is nice and cushy and provides a good amount of cushioning, you reach the ground so quickly and that foam compacts so quickly down to the ground that you really do get good ground feel, which was kind of surprising to me and a neat little feature. Now as for the durability of the outsole and the midsole, this fingerprint pattern, especially right here at the front side of the heel, because I tend to be a very midfoot kind of whole foot uh, lander when I run, the fingerprint pattern has worn off, which is going to compromise the traction a little bit, but this isn't exactly a trail shoe. In fact, I probably wouldn't take this on trails much at all, uh, but the durability is decent. Um, I myself would probably run about 350 miles on it, depending, but I think that an average runner is probably going to get 250 to 300 miles. It really depends on how clean your gait is. Now, the one thing that I would like to point out before we go is this little orange loop here. This is kind of a, a piece, a little bit of a piece of rigid TP or plastic that sits in here just to provide a little bit of extra, excuse me, medial side uh, stability for the shoe. It's not a stability feature as in like posting or anything like that. 
all it's meant to do is to really brace that heel and brace the weight from kind of sliding around. And that's kind of important because as we'll mention in the upper, there's not much to the heel counter there. So that's the midsole and the outsole. And now let's talk about that upper. To me, the most interesting thing and the coolest thing about the upper is that Under Armour took its experience with really quality apparel and they went right to the source. Now, if you if you want something that's going to fit very comfortably, it's going to breathe well, it's not going to be intrusive, and it's basically going to disappear on your body, one of the things that should pop to mind, and if it doesn't, it will after I tell you this, is the bra. So when they went to design the upper for the Speedform Apollo, Under Armour went to bra designers to talk about exactly how it should be built. One of the things that this accomplishes, aside from being, again, disappearing on the foot, very comfortable, very malleable and molding to the foot, one of the things that this accomplishes is that it allows Under Armour to really kind of rein in manufacturing tolerances a little bit. What does that mean? Well, when a manufacturer goes and has a shoe belt, if they say they want a 23 millimeter rise or stack in the heel and a 20 millimeter stack in the forefoot, the manufacturer goes, okay, we'll do our best. And they have a range. So it may be able to be 23 and a half in the heel and 19 and a half in the forefoot, therefore creating a greater drop. But they have these ranges of manufacturing tolerances that they have to stay within. Now, in working with a material that's not as kind of fickle as EVA foam, or in this case, micro G foam in the midsole and forefoot, um, in the upper, they really could be more exacting. They can say, this has to be exactly this measurement. So that really made a difference and is one of the things that's a highlight of this upper. The material itself of the upper is a really tightly woven mesh, which actually, if you're feeling it from the outside, feels kind of like neoprene, which is very interesting. Now, it's not the most breathable thing in the world, but to address this, what Under Armour did is they poked a bunch of holes in it. We've got here on the lateral side, seven holes, here on the medial side, 24 holes, and here on the forefoot, we've got 41 holes, creating a lot of ventilation. Aside from that, this tongue that you can see here, you may be able to see up close there, is just straight up open mesh. That said, if you do choose to run on this in like dusty or sandy or dirt, it was a lot of debris, you're going to get things in the shoe, so be aware of that. Internally, the upper has a very, very soft internal liner, this orange part that you can see here. Very comfortable for barefoot, and I've worn this several times barefoot while walking or lifting or something like that. In terms of running, I think it would definitely be very comfortable, but for me, I've mentioned this several times in the past, I always like to wear socks. And when I didn't wear socks with this, I did get a small blister right there, right on the, le the medial side of my left big toe for some reason. I don't really know why. It did not happen at all. I didn't even feel irritation, in fact, when I was wearing socks. So it's very interesting that it showed up when I wasn't wearing any socks because there's nothing there to rub. But that's neither here nor there. Internally, there are also only two main seams. You can see those running down the side there. That's that black seam on the inside there. And you can actually see it here on the outside as well. Now that seam is really well taped over with what I think is called Bemis tape, which is, um, what do they call it? Supersonic molded or welded to the shoe, creates a very soft transition and stays out of the way. Now in terms of the rear of the shoe, there is no removable sock liner, but what you can see is that the upper goes right down down with no seam into the sock liner. Very interesting setup and again reminiscent of bra construction which makes it that much more comfortable. As I mentioned earlier the heel counter in the shoe is really not much. There's not much to it. In this case well, all they've done is they have this external piece of silicone that basically creates a bracing feature. It actually supports the shoe quite well and again with this addition of this kind of medial little piece here, shank or whatever you want to call it, on the medial heel, it keeps things really nice and solid internally. Finally, the last thing I'd like to point out about this, hearkening again back to that natural shoe shape that they say, or foot shape rather, is that you can see this divot. I don't know the best light to see right there, but it's like you can see where the line between the big and second toe comes. Now, to me, this is pretty much strictly cosmetic. Internally, I don't really feel much of a difference and it doesn't really feel like there's anything going on there. Now let's talk about the fit of the Speedform Apollo. Put quite simply, I love the way this thing fits. Now yes, I did say I got a blister on the left big toe during a barefoot run and, and yes, I did say I wish it fit, you know, kind of a little bit wider toe box, but it fits really, really nicely. It's very comfortable and you can really tell that they have those bra designers that they hired to build this shoe did a really fantastic job and I wish more people would think outside the box like that. 
The other thing is that it does fit true to size. This is an 11 and fits me spot on where I would expect it to. And finally, at 7.2 ounces in a men's size 11, which this is right here, it's a very lightweight shoe. And if you go down in size, obviously it gets even lighter, sub 7 ounces with no problem. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the ride of the shoe is not what I expected. I expected it to be a little kind of mushy and not very responsive, but instead I was pleasantly surprised. It gets down to the ground quickly and you have that ground feel almost immediately. The other thing that I noticed is that this is a zippy and responsive shoe. However, Unlike some zippy and responsive lightweight shoes that I've taken a look at in the past, it doesn't for I don't feel like it forces me to go faster. I feel like this is a shoe that can lay back if I wanted to, but it could also go out and crush if that's what you're looking to do. As for distance, I wouldn't hesitate at all to take this a half marathon or under, and if I spent enough time in it and really got my foot adapted to it, I think that I wouldn't have a problem going for the full marathon distance in it either. The past few years have been a really great time to watch established brands as well as startup brands really put out some innovative products. It's really great that you can't any longer put out just a crappy shoe that you're putting out there just for the sake of getting into the running shoe game. I think that with this shoe, Under Armour has done a great thing in moving into the performance running shoe market with a really well-designed, lightweight, and performance-oriented product. With a solid price point of $99, this is also a very attainable shoe that pretty much anyone shouldn't be afraid to try out. I gotta say, I'm very, very impressed with this shoe from Under Armour, and I hope they really keep their sights focused on exactly what matters and putting out quality, well-designed shoes that think outside the box. So our question for you today is, have you tried any of the Under Armour running shoes? Whether it's a Speedform Apollo or the Speedform Apollo XC, any of those guys. If you have, leave your answers in the comments section below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's review. Before you go, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click the YouTube icon right over there and you can subscribe really easily one click. It lets you know when new videos are up, new reviews, video diaries, and when new promotions go live. So definitely be sure to subscribe. The the other thing is to follow us on all the social outlets we've got listed right over here. Check them out, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Strava, where all my training, personal training for Ironman Chattanooga just went up. And as always, don't forget to check out all of our reviews at Gearist.com. If you've got any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below or email us at info at Gearist.com or just contact us on Twitter or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.